Yeah. What's going on, JSU fam and everybody else in between? So I'm here with the incomparable DJ, Mr. Adams. Thank you for taking the time out to chop it up with me, man. And yeah, also, sure. thanks for scooping a copy of my book. Truly appreciate that, bro. Absolutely. You know, we had to do that. I'm actually late. I should have been bought it, but you know, hey, better late than never. Appreciate. This is good work. It's good yes, work. Sir. I'm diving into it real soon. And uh, appreciate you pulling out the big college word adjective <laughs> to describe me with the incomparable. <laughs> that made me feel real special. I didn't pay him to say that, but I do appreciate it. Hey, speaking of feeling better, I know we'll, I'll be glad when we get to some normalcy and I get back to get to one of your events where you're spinning. Because I yes, mean, I need, I need that in my life right now. Yeah, because I'm really I'm about to start go ahead and uh like DJing on uh Twitch and mm. I and stuff like that, but I have yeah. not yet because because I tried it once when mm. the pandemic first hit and it just didn't feel the same. Yeah, for me, so I kind of left it alone. But you know, I'm I'm itching to get back out into into the streets and spin some records, man. Yeah, that was that was gonna be a, a, one of the questions that I asked because I was gonna be curious about how you feel about, you know, the virtual spins now. And, you know, cause I know mm -hmm. with DJing, it's a part of you feeling the crowd, getting that energy and having everybody and getting that emotion too, Thank just seeing everybody reaction, you know? So that was one of the things. So if you can elaborate a little more, that'd be cool. That'd be great. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Well, first of all, I take my hat off and salute every DJ out there that's uh, online getting busy. Mm -hmm. I've been studying them all from D nice to everybody in Jackson, Mississippi, to everybody in Chicago, to everybody out here in, in, in DC that's getting busy DJing online. I tried it a couple of times and I, yeah. I really realized that I really, really feed off the crowd. Yeah. You know, like I, I DJ in the house and record mixes all the time. Mm -hmm. But when I was doing it um, on IG, it just did not feel the same. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just, uh, battling depression of the pandemic or what but it just didn't feel right you yeah. know for, for me like everybody else doing it i've been watching everybody get busy yeah and it's dope i love it i you know i've tipped djs before and i share the information yeah. here check this dj out knife wonder uh mm -hmm. dj cousin b you know a ton of people you know my man dj cujo dj nasty show they get busy but i just i don't know it just didn't feel I guess. for me it just didn't feel right you know so you know, I'll be going crazy in, in the regular parties. And I, bars see, I, see, I see you in the booth. You be getting busy, man. And I sit up there a couple. I'm like, let me get this man some space, man. Like, <laughs> Uncle, like Uncle Scrap said, if you ain't dancing, I don't trust you as a DJ, man. So that's right. That's my West Side Chicago mentor right there. That's yeah, for real, for real. And he's absolutely right. If you look at the DJ and he looked bored, mm, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. The, you know, the crowd is feeding off the same energy, and I'm feeding off of them. It's give and take. Yeah. So I know exactly what he means by that when he said, you know, you know, the, the DJ ain't dancing, man. It sucks, might the energy, man. it sucks the energy out. Definitely, definitely. So, so transitioning, one thing I know, I didn't give you props about these guy got us hoodies. You yes, thorough sir. with those, man. So I had to scoop me and the wife. We got one, and everybody out there, if you don't have one, I need you to go pick up forty of them right now. Well, I should have grabbed one. <laughs> 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 yeah so look so how did that become a part of your mantra that that moniker like take me to the to the you know through the story how this came about you know and we'll also tell people where we get them and i'll i'll tag that along with the interview so yeah no problem man um i used to well i'm still heavy on twitter but i used to put on twitter all the time uh god got me mm. right that's the first thing i would tweet when i wake up in the morning Okay. And it wasn't necessarily for anybody else or a branding tool or anything like that. It was just kind of help me get my day started off in the right direction. Hmm. Like if I'm going to jump up and grab my phone, then I need to kick it off with that first before I get into the foolishness, right. you know, social media. <laughs> so I usually, you know, try to read a Bible verse on, you know, the Bible app, and then I tweet that out. Hmm. And, you know, I was doing that at first when I first got on Twitter and hmm. then, and, uh, what years is 2012 i got married yeah and that's when i switched it to god got us mm, gosh you gotta include the family. I've been, so i was looking fast forward to what was it last year when i pushed the shirts out i was looking for something to kind of you know like you know merch wise yeah. you know to attach to me djing because you know, all my dj friends got merged they got catchy slogans right, they got right. you know branding tools and things of that nature and i was like man i need something and then i was tooling around with a couple other things and then you know one of my friends was like why don't you just do god got us and i was like i mean it is yours i mean you know of course you of course like, but it flew right over my own head at first you know of course you know i still be right in front of your face and you don't even 
yeah. realize it. But yeah, so I partnered up with my man, um, George Chuck, DJ George Chuck. He's a graduate of Tougaloo. Okay. And uh, he had already has a, a clothing site that he presses up shirts and whatnot, you know, very successful called uh, I Got It Made.us. That's the website. Okay. You know, I've ordered stuff from him before. And I was like, instead of me, one of the things that about me, if I see one of my homies and he already has the heat and press and they've already pressing up shirts and getting busy, okay. Instead of me going and buying the heat and press, I'm like, well, why don't I just partner up with him? True. True. Yeah. You know, and we both, you know, he get a cut, I get a cut, and we both get some bread rather than like I got three kids. You know, you got you got a child too. And I don't necessarily have all the time to press up all my own stuff. So I was like, look, I'll come up with a design. We shot designs back and forth. And you know, he's pushing it, I'm pushing it. We work better together than just me pushing it all by myself. Definitely. So that's how I came, you know, to be from that. He, I threw uh, one of my ideas for the logo out. He came up with something better. We partnered mm -hmm. up with that, pushed it out. You know, I came up with some, you know, the, the script for our first little ad and, you know, sent him some pictures and he put the ad together. And here we are. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. That's a dope story, man. I mean, it's also awesome that you were that close in contact with somebody that can help push your idea. Because sometimes, like you said, it went right over your head. Then he helped you tweak a few things. And when y'all get your synergy and everything together, the product is amazing. I mean, that's why I had to scoop me and a wife one. You know, we're going to grab I appreciate it. that too. I definitely appreciate it. Every time somebody send me a picture when I'd be like ecstatic running around the house. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. You just don't know how it's going to go. You don't know, you know, you don't know how this stuff is going to fly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, know. you know, when you find something that connects with the people just as much as it connects with you, man, it's just, it's an exciting thing. That's dope, man. That's real dope. So check, all right. Now let's hop into DeLorean. We're gonna go back in time real quick. So what led you to touching down in Mississippi's Urban University? And that's Jackson State for everybody out there who don't understand that, that name. Mm -hmm. See, now you from Chicago. Yes, sir. I'm from Chicago. I'm from Chicago mm -hmm. in the west side in the west suburbs of Aurora. And you know, just like I know, when you got certain people behind you, what they was telling you, well, I'm gonna tell you what they was telling me. Boy, you gotta get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to right. say, that was the next combo right after graduation for me. What are you doing? Because you're not staying. Yeah, what you do? No, even before graduation, really, it's more or less like once you start getting like middle junior year into your senior oh, year, all right, what are you going to do? Because you ain't going to the service. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that was the conversation I had to have with my moms and my sister. And my sister um, is alumni of Jackson State. Oh, okay. okay. So she knew my, she knew one of the guidance counselors at my high school. My, my mom did. Okay. And um, so she got my first guidance counselor. She was trying to push me to all the schools in Illinois. Yeah. My grades were not good enough to go to these schools in Illinois and actually like prosper. Yeah, gotcha. You know, they looking, you know, if you're going to get a scholarship, they're looking for a minimum 25 ACT. Yeah. Them schools, I think I had like a 21. Those yeah. schools are 15 grand a semester. This was back in 98. You know, we if that you know that might be lowballing it, right? You know, I was like, oh, about, and that's in state. <laughs> yeah, that's in state. Yeah, exactly. When you talk about yeah. the NIU, U of I, DePaul, Southern Illinois, Carbondale, all them schools. You know, they we're they not, cost we're, not, we're not even gonna talk about Northwestern or University of Chicago. Those out the question. That's just like back then. That was out the question. I, so I couldn't imagine the numbers what they throwing at people now. So exactly. Yeah. So she got my guidance counselor. It's my wife's work phone. She got my guidance counselor switched to this black, to the black guy at school, you know, they were in alphabetical order. So she had me switch to a guidance counselor I wasn't even supposed to have. And he mm -hmm. said, Jonas, where are you trying to go to school? I said, I really want to go to a black school. He threw away all the other applications. He was like, come see me in two days. Mm -hmm. He had a application for Jackson State, uh -huh. Clark, uh -huh. Howard, okay. Morehouse, okay. Uh, Fisk, Norfolk, Hampton, just like he just had him. He and he was like, yeah. "Come back next week. I have some more." So I'm filling them all out. Yeah. Grades yeah. are not the greatest. I might have been sitting on the two five, but my my ACT was pretty decent and it would have been higher. But my science score was so low yeah. that it dropped all the rest of my. You know, when you average it out, all the rest is like English, math was like twenty fives, twenty sixes. My know. science was a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> so when um i'm applying to all these schools i got into all this program called the um the alpha lights program where they're taking me through all these like once a month 
like uh, preparing you for school, preparing you for college, preparing you for life outside of high school. Okay. So I'm doing that, I'm getting my grades back up. And the first school I got accepted to was Jackson State. Really? Okay. I said, that's where I'm going. I ain't even, I ain't know if I was yeah. going to get accepted into nothing else. I didn't get into Morehouse. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into some, a couple of others. Yeah. So yeah. I ended up getting into some more, but I just went with the first one that said, yes. Yeah. So, yep, that's where I'm going. I understand, man. Shoot, that was me. Your story about your standardized testing is funny because it takes me back to my score was similar to yours. It dropped, everything else was off the charts, but I fell asleep in the, on the test. Because <laughs> check, because the night before was the day all the seniors, we went to Great America. So we spent the whole, wow. the whole day there and my goofy butt scheduled my exam that day, forgetting, not thinking about, oh, we're going to go to Great America all day in the sun, running around. Yeah, yeah. Tired. Had to get up at like seven, eight, or whatever to report to this test. I don't I forgot how many hours it was. All I remember is falling all day. It's pretty, pretty much half the day is gone when you take yeah. the all, all I remember is falling asleep. And my homegirl, she had, she was in there. Luckily for her, I mean, luckily for me, she was behind me and Kit was kicking my desk, waking me up. I remember that. I didn't even finish like the English session. And when my mom hears this, she's gonna flip because she's never known why my, the English and this <laughs> other part was so just, it just like I crashed. Everything just took a double dive. So shout out to that. If <laughs> <laughs> you say you fell asleep on the English portion and now you are author, put that in perspective. Ain't it crazy how things work? <laughs> They want to listen to me. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, but that's who you want to listen to is somebody who has been through something. <laughs> <laughs> somebody that didn't always have it figured out. That's who you no, want to listen no, to. No, at all, at all. Truthfully, they, they didn't want to listen to 17 year old me. No. Right. And okay. listen, I got to Jack State at 17. I, I have a late birthday in November. Yeah. So I graduated at 17 by the time I got to Jackson State. That was a voting year. I couldn't even vote. <laughs> you in college. <laughs> right, right. Away from home, nine hundred plus miles away from home. Well, right. Yes, sir. So check. So, was it also when you were down at J State? Did you discover your passion at DJ? And also, what piqued your interest? I know it's two fold question, but like I want to know what what when did you discover that passion and what uh -huh. helped pique that interest? I was always a kid growing up that taped songs off the radio. Mm make my own mixtapes. I didn't even know it was called mixtape. I'm just, I, these are my favorite songs. I want to record them off the radio. Gotcha. That went to recording videos off of BET and MTV, Yom TV Raps, Rap City, uh, Video Vibrations, Video LP, Video Soul. Man, I, man. I recorded them on Midnight Love. I recorded oh, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know that that was a passion for music at the time. Gotcha. But, and plus I just really liked to party. Like I like it's, <laughs> I mean, in an unhealthy way. Sometimes I just always wanted to go to where the party was. It was in the, a certain neighborhoods I wasn't supposed to be in. I'm I'm figure out a way to make sure I'm still at that party because yeah. I ain't, I wasn't no knucklehead to the sense of uh, getting in trouble. I didn't get in much trouble in school. Uh, not not many not many fights. Not, I didn't cause a lot of trouble, but I always wanted to go out. I just wanted to go holler at the chicks and dance and kick yeah. it. That's all I wanted to do, you yeah. know. So, I mean, we all did. I totally understand that. I totally right. understand. So, get to college, and I was a computer science major, but I ain't had the right teachers. The teacher I had, I don't even, nobody get offended, but they were foreign and I couldn't understand them. Couldn't understand her. So that whole first year, when I was at Jackson State, I was just frustrated. So I changed my major to mass communications. Mass communications is a radio station there. Mm -hmm. I probably didn't start, I started volunteering at the radio station later on around that same time is when I started actually DJing. I started DJing on accident. When I started doing it, that's when I realized like, I should have, this is what I should have been doing this. Yeah. So, so that's how that happened. But like the specific story of me DJing is that I went to a party I was at a party at a friend's house and he had some DJ equipment, he banging the music out. You know Eggman. Yeah, okay, okay, all right, I'm with you. Yeah, so uh, I'm at his house with right. a bunch of the homies <clears throat> and my boy Count and somebody with Eggman, matter of fact, was like, man, I'm only finna play the songs I wanna hear. We was like, man, look, look, you go over there. Me and Count gonna get the CDs out of our car. We gonna play the music and we rock that. We rock that party yeah. on accident. Yeah. Then yeah. another yeah. accident. Uh -huh. It's funny how things work because on, on accident, now I'm at a party at Millsaps, like maybe a couple weeks later. Okay. 
and the DJ there was horrible. Oh. And my man Jamari, he was like, yo, man, you got to do something. Keep in mind, it was, that wasn't no like packed out house party. It was a bunch of people there, but it wasn't like word was getting around that I could do that now. Right. So I went over to the dude. I started telling him what to play. This is the guy down the street. It's going to sound crazy. He mm-hmm. said, you know how to work this stuff? I did not. I told him, yeah. He Dang. said, I'll be right back. Watch this stuff for me. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. He gave me $20 and left. <laughs> but sometimes the best teacher is trial by fire. You get put in that situation. And I did good at that party. A, yeah. Q, a Q dog, a member of Omega Psi Five fraternity, came up to me in that party. Really? And said, hey, man, we having a party at Palm Beach, uh, Capital City Classic night, man. You want to do it? Yeah. Capital City Classic night. Now, that's a pretty... My first club gig was Capital City Classic with my man Count. We was DJing together at the time. Wow. Wow. Okay. At Palm Beach, you know that sweat box. That's and Jackson, anybody here listening, JSU fam, alumni from the years that we were there, and they are familiar with Palm Beach, they know exactly what I'm talking about. That sweat box packed out, line packed. Wrapped, wrapped around the, the damn street. People trying to get out across the street into the medical facility parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fam. So yeah. Describing your style, is there anybody in particular that you can say you started taking pieces from when you started coming up? Uh, I would probably say a lot of Kid Capri. Mm. And the reason I say that is because he talks a ton. Are we cursing on here? I need to know. No, I don't think I'm yet. Go ahead, man. Huh? You're good. You're good. You're good here. Yeah. Go ahead. He talks cash shit his whole yeah. set when he's DJing, he is rocking, he got the energy. So that, if I had to pick anybody, I would probably say Kid Capri, cause he be talking noise. I be talking noise, I be cracking jokes. You know, half of me having fun is messing with people in the crowd and shouting people out that ain't supposed to be necessarily shouted out. Like, you know, you know, you gotta shout like, if somebody's birthday, you gonna shout them out. But I'm shouting out like random people if they fall or, you know, <laughs> that person with, a drink in each hand, I'm gonna shout them out because I'm my whole thing is about DJing. It <laughs> you can have you can practice and you can learn all the scratching mm-hmm. and you can learn all the behind the back body tricks and all of that stuff. All that stuff is cool. It's great. But you gotta know what to play and when to play it. Definitely. So you gotta look at these people and kind of be able to take them somewhere. Mm. Definitely. So Definitely. along with that is you talking to them, you making them feel special. You make mm-hmm. people don't have to party with you. There's a million one places that they can go. That's They've right. been working hard, hard all week. You know, they got a little extra change. They finna go out. Right. You know, like you can't mess that up for them. No, not, not at all. Cause like I say, they've been waiting on this and now you're creating this experience for them. Not only is they, that experience going to last at that point, it's nostalgic. They can sit back and be like, yo, that DJ was in it. He was always, yeah. you know, said the tracks was right on point. He was talking, exactly. they talking cash shit, getting the energy right. going and you're having a great time. Like that's what you want to feel when you go out. Exactly. Yeah. So you do not want to mess that up for that person that's just working a nine to five and they just want to go out and have a couple of drinks and have a good time. And here you are playing all the songs you like. Like, <laughs> like you just can't do that to people. Cause I've we've been there before when we on, you know, we don't went out and we go to a spot and it's just whack. And you're like, oh, I should have went over here. I could have went over there, you know, but you you don't ruin their whole weekend. Yeah, yeah. Totally understand. Now they back on work on Monday, like, man, that weekend was trash. They didn't right. get a chance to. You know, yeah, blow off right. some steam and hang out and have a good time and you know how the female or the ladies you know going to go out they ladies put in a whole lot of preparation to go out you better not mess up their night yes indeed yeah they, and, they and coming that. in 89 deep they buying drinks they celebrating the birthday they don't got their hair done they don't got their nails done they've got some heels on you know they, they you know they don't put some clothes on and here you are ruining things so i just <laughs> i take it you know I, I take it really seriously what i do because it's not about me yeah dog, it's about the 200 300 500 people that decided to come party with me that night and trust me i appreciate it there needs to be more cats like you out there out you like that because i i know it's plenty of times you go in and you're like no oh, he's gonna play one full album of this right now <laughs> and it's trash <laughs> you just, know like, <laughs> like okay you're gonna stay in that time period for 10 straight minutes all right and these are not the heaters but you know yep. yeah it happens but no but uh so 
Now, back talking about in Jackson, you represent heavily down there. Like at one point, I possibly believe you were one of the hardest working men in Mississippi. Like you hold it it down for, <laughs> you're holding down for 88, 5, 99 jams, 1059, and co-hosting a few shows on that were public access channels. Like you have done your research, young man. Oh, look, <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna waste anybody's time. I'm gonna come here and let them know. Yes, I've been studying you. I've been checking your background and stuff. So you're thorough. Like, what helped you keep your focus with that, man? And like, when did you have some downtime? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time, I didn't have any downtime, and mm. I didn't really want any. Mm. To be honest, I mean, um, you know, man, look, I'm from a household, you know, three kids, single mother. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, when you see how hard you know, your mom is working. That mm-hmm. just automatically gets in you. All three of us work hard. Yeah. And that's all I know is to, you know, just keep something going. You know, mm-hmm. like like you said, my first radio station, I was at um, uh, 88.5, which is WJSU. Yeah. And I rose up through the ranks to become music director. Mm-hmm. Right, I was, you know, at, from volunteering to becoming a music director, which means I programmed everything on the station. That's all jazz. Oh, okay. And hosted my own show. Yeah. They, they still run with that show. I created a show called Jazzmatic Mornings. Really? I created that show. I created the name. I created everything about it. Okay. So um, that was radio gig. Then I went to 105.9. Mm-hmm. And um, that's a gospel station. Word. My program director is the one that put me on because they were they would call Jackson State when mm-hmm. I was a student and say they would you know my, they called my program director and was like, hey, you got any students over there? We need we need a part timer. And she sent me over there. Really? And I was doing well at WJC. So he sent me over there. I got that job. Now I'm working both. Okay. Now 105.9 is in the same building as 99 Jams. Right. So when they realized that I was in the streets DJing so hard and doing WJSU, they switched me. I was still doing like some engineer work at WOAD 105.9 because okay. they're right in the same building. Okay. So I was still uh, engineering yeah. a couple of talk shows that they had. Right. But then I was on the air for 99 Jams. So I was working technically for three radio stations at once. Oof. Hardest working man in Mississippi, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's and also, I- then I rose, then I left a couple of those stations and did, I was uh, executive producer for Mississippi Public Broadcasting and was uh, producing four different talk shows five days a week. Okay. And that broadcast to the entire state of Mississippi. Mm. Yes, sir. That's what's up. That's a hell of a grind right there, bro. So, and DJing in the club three or four nights a week. I'll, that part. <laughs> <laughs> and still making it up every morning alive and sane. That's barely. He <laughs> said barely. Barely. <laughs> I was a heavy drinker at that time. And I was maybe three or four hours of sleep. Yeah. Go to work hungover. Mm. I, I did it all. Mm. I'm not, not proud of that, but it's, it's there. Yeah. Hey man, it's part of the resume, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So now you relocated to the East Coast. So, what are some of like the immediate differences that you recognize, like as far as like venues, your peers, and I'm talking about in regards to DJing, you know, like what's something mm-hmm. that, that you notice in these new surroundings? And what has helped you adapt? Now in Jackson, at my height, I was the house DJ for the biggest club in Jackson at the time. Anyway, I don't know if there's something bigger there now, but that's a Freelance Bar and Groove. Hmm. And anybody that's been through Jackson is aware of Freelance Bar and Groove. So I was the house DJ for them for four and a half years. So I was there every Thursday and Saturday night, Mm -hmm. you know, the whole year. So that's that club is humongous. You already know how big that club is. So moving up here, what I noticed is that you know, in Jackson at the time, it's only going to be like maybe three or four parties popping at one time. Right. Now, there might be other parties going on, but it's like three or four major functions that's going on. Gotcha. Up here in D.C., I was on one block DJing, and there was four or five other parties popping on that one block. Mm-hmm. And all of them were jumping. Yeah. Now, these, these spots are smaller. You know, like Freelines was holding a thousand people. Right. You know, the capacity for a lot of these places, 250, 300, 400 people. But they all packed out, everybody getting money. So the competition uh, is a lot stronger in Jackson, meaning that 
you know, this other DJ might not like you so much because you're the guy at Freelance, you know, you at the big club, you know, that's called the big club. And what I noticed is that up here, the DJs ain't competing with each other so much to get the best gigs. Mm. A lot of more DJs are eating well yeah. here, yeah. you know, up here. Ain't nobody really stepping on each other's toes. A lot of DJs came out the woodworks just to reach out and help me mm. get gigs that's, here. Yeah, that's dope. DJ, which was crazy to me because that don't happen a lot in other markets, you know, where they'll see somebody just moved in town. Like, oh, yeah, come on, man. I got here. Link up with this promoter. They're going to take care of, you know, they're going to have something for you. That's what DJ Cousin B did. Jackson mm-hmm. State alumni. Oh, yeah. What's up, Cousin B? I reached out. Yeah, I reached out to him, kicked it with him a few nights, kind of see what the scene was looking like. I reached out to DJ Schemes. He helped me out a lot, too. DJ Heat, she's the DJ for the Wizards now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I reached out to her because um, me and Schemes and Heat are in the core DJs. That's the Nationwide DJ Coalition. And um, so I reached out to them, but Cousin B hooked me up with a couple of promoters, which hooked me up with a couple of other promoters. Mm-hmm. And everybody just really reached out to help me. My man, DJ Drex, uh, he's a, a Masonic brother. I didn't know him at all. He just reached out to me on Facebook, uh, you know, out the blue when I first moved out here. All right. Yeah. Linked up with him. He helped me out a lot, get some gigs, man. We swapped all type of gigs back and forth and kick it with each other and all of that. And I was just dumbfounded by, you know, yeah. the amount of love that I received when I first got here and still get here. Yeah, you're right. Cause like, DJ, yeah, because it's DJ it is competitive. I mean, it's competitive. It's very competitive. It's very competitive. But like here, nobody was really tripping about like here. Talk to, you know, they got parties for, yeah, I'm already, I'm, I'm loaded up. These They was loaded up already. You know, I'm looking up here. These DJs here are DJing every night of the week before pandemic. Yeah. I never heard of such. You know, in Jackson, you know, everybody party on the weekend. You might, you know, Thursday night, I'm at Freelance. So I'm there every Thursday and Saturday night. And then I could book something else if I felt like it. Right. But yeah. here, I'm looking at people DJing on Monday nights, Tuesday nights. Sunday night, just random nights that I ain't never DJed on. <laughs> they got regular gigs here. Trust me, that that was an adjustment I had to make when I first moved out here. I I, I didn't understand because my buddy was like, "Yeah, we're going to a a happy hour after work." Oh, you know, okay, cool. Happy Ooh. hour different. Where in the shy in down south where I've been. These yeah. half hours, this was like back when I first moved out here in like '05 and stuff. Turned into yeah. full out parties, DJ, and I'm like. Exactly. Like this is Tuesday, bro. What are we <laughs> exactly? <laughs> That's what I was. I was like, whoa, y'all. They going hard on a Wednesday happy hour. Like everybody in this mug is. That's another thing. I'm trying to say this in a way, where the cost of living is higher here, and and it's very noticeable. Understate. <laughs> yeah. And. A lot of people look at that as a negative thing. I don't. That just means that more there's better jobs here and more people are getting money. More opportunity. Now, that means that there's a lot of people here, a lot more people here are getting money, and they can afford to go party three, four, five nights out the week or hit a happy hour after work every day below a few hundred, and it's nothing to them. Of course, yeah. I ain't never seen so many happy hours jumping at one time. What Jackson is doing with the day party on um, that Friday of homecoming for Jackson State, yeah. they were doing here every weekend. Oh, of course. Yeah. That- every weekend, there's day parties all over the place. I ain't never seen so many day parties that I moved up here. On one, on Saturday and Sunday, every, every venue is loaded up with day parties and everybody's kicking it. Like, and everybody's parking. Everybody's going hard. Not just how everybody just kind of chilling, you uh-huh. know, lounging. No, they partying. I was like, okay, I see what's popping here. Yeah, so that was, yeah, a, yeah. That was a good group. Group. hell yeah, that's a good groove to get in, and that's also dope that you have people to actually embrace you with open arms and put you into the, into the light and right into the line you needed to be. So, and also with that, it's you know you established you say you were with the, you were with the core DJs, mm-hmm. but not only that, you got some other noteworthy affiliations. I'm talking about as far as clients, like you were once an official Jack Daniels DJ. You have forever, forever 21, Victoria's yep. Secrets, DSW. <laughs> so what was it like when you were chosen to partner with these corporations, man? Like that was at that moment, you start pinching yourself like, oh, this is real. <laughs> like <laughs> That's the thing, because um, 
I was, I still am affiliated with a service called Scratch Events. Mm, okay. So when you're affiliated with them, they're the ones that uh, corporates, corporate, uh, well, I was, well, corporate corporations, <laughs> they're the ones that corporations go to to mm. book DJs right. for, you know, in store appearances. When you see a DJ in the store, most likely it's a Scratch Events DJ. Gotcha. I mean, okay. so when you see me at a Victoria's Secret, it's all through one agency. Uh, DFW and uh, where's another place I've done? It doesn't matter, but I've done in store. Pe- oh, I did a, when I did a grand opening for Forever Twenty One mm-hmm. at the Jackson Outlet um, was in Pearl, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. I did a grand opening for them through Scratch Events. So that's just a uh, it's they book through them because they know that when they book a DJ through Scratch Events, they're going to have a certain look. Mm-hmm. They know how to cater to all crowds. Mm-hmm. um they'll have clean music yeah. you know they're not going to have somebody in there just going wild half drunk or whatever they know they got a dj that can carry themselves in that type of atmosphere okay you know they're going to be dressed for the part you know they're going to have the right equipment that looks a certain way you know they like they're really particular okay. so they don't just let anybody in it that's dope that's you dope. know yeah now with jack daniels that's our boy larry leggett all day <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know, we went to school yeah. with Larry, so you know, just, a little I was bit. DJing with him before we graduated. So when he got the gig at Jack Daniels, I hadn't even never drank Jack Daniels before he started working with Jack Daniels as a brand ambassador. I don't know what his title is now. I don't know ru- ruler of the Jack Daniels world. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> when he put me on, when he said, "Man, I got this job with Jack Daniels," because before he would just hit up different liquor companies and get sponsorships for the parties he was already throwing. Yeah. yeah. So we were in freelance. You know, I was a Hennessy drinker. Okay. And he was like, hey, you ever tried Jack Daniels? I was like, no, I haven't. And he had a bartender fix me one. I was like, yeah, I like this. <laughs> I'm rolling with this. You with Jack Daniels? And this, I stopped drinking Hennessy right off that. Dope. <laughs> you know, and he started throwing more parties. And he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have Jack Daniel DJs. And that's what he did. That's dope. That's dope. And the rest is history. That's yep. awesome, man. That was awesome. So we've all been dealing with this, well, and having to endure the pandemic, man. So with all the accolades, all the achievements, and, you know, you enjoying the, the human connection, what's been helping you get through this period? Because we've been so just separated from everybody. Everybody had to go through this period yeah. of isolation. So now do you mean like uh, financially or do you like as far as work? Uh, as far as like just... work-wise with DJ and like, you know, that, that connection, because everybody's been missing that social connection. Just, just period. Yeah. It's just so, uh, that's just a part of life. You know, everybody's just, it's, mm-hmm. it's necessary and i just know as a dj you know you have uh you create very intimate uh ambiances with people as you're doing your as you're doing your thing so do you hear my children Can you? hey don't worry man <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um yeah i that's the thing man like it's with this pandemic i can honestly say it for like the first time in my life is when i felt like a a severe state of depression. Mm. I got laid off last year. Yeah. Um, I was working for a news radio station in DC and was moving through the ranks and was really doing very well for them. This was like my first uh, job in my field that I was able to land since I've been here. I've worked a lot of odd jobs and I've been getting steady gigs, but um, this was the first secure radio position that I had gotten since I got here. And I've been there for about a year and a half. And then they just laid off the whole company because of the pandemic. And like abruptly too, like, you know, they gave us like a month notice, but we thought we were doing well because when you're dealing with news, yeah. what crazier news cycle was there than last summer? <laughs> Trump going crazy. We right. NDT now, so Trump right. going crazy. There's news on that every week. We're in the middle of a pandemic, right. you know, and it just, you know, which led to other big news topics. Like, you know, everything was new. Every, the news was crazy. Right. And we were one of the best at covering it. So all of us thought we were straight. They had us working from home for like a month or two. And then all of a sudden they laid everybody off. That's so insane. that, That's that I'll, I'll tell you, that ripped my whole heart out. I was, man, super depressed. But it's funny how God works. You know, like, you, like I've been saying, God got us because right at that time, my kids moved to virtual learning in their school district. Yeah. You know, I got a baby, like a young baby. My baby is one and a half. She'll be two in um, August. You know, my daughter, then my two boys, one's in middle school and one is in first grade. Okay. 
but they can't do virtual learning on their own without somebody being here. You know, and my daughter ain't doing virtual learning. We don't want to put in no daycare, no pandemic. So, <laughs> you know, that enabled me, like the layoff happened a month before they were about to start school back. Okay. So that enabled me to be home. Yeah. So it was a tough pill to swallow, but it had to be done. Right. And I could sit here and saying it like it was just easy, but it wasn't yeah. an easy thing for me to accept. We just ran through everything I'm used to juggling as far as jobs, two or three radio stations and two or three gigs a week. That's how I'm used to operate. I'm just used to always going on full steam. I guess God said, look, stop. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a really hard time stopping. And I really started feeling better about it maybe just a couple of months ago. Like, you know, uh, had to get through the holidays and, you know, just maybe around February is when I started actually feeling like myself again. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, I, he, like literally God just told me to stop. Mm. You know, when you don't know how to stop on your own, he just, he'll do it for you. Oh, and that's exactly what he did. Because, yeah, and it's yeah, and there's no way around it. No, but you no way around it. Yeah, you told the truth, man. It was one of those like, like you said, last year was an interesting year, and then that was the year my son was born. So right, right, I had to be at home. Like I say, I started working from home, and then I'm with him every day, which was a blessing because it is a blessing. It's an absolute blessing. Yeah, I can, we don't I, know it at the time, but yeah, looking back at all the time you got to spend with your children with the yep. virtual learning. That was you helping being a guide. And a lot of people, a lot of kids don't get to have that. Some of the parents still had to go to work or yeah. whatever their circumstance was. They didn't get to spend these moments, these precious moments, because children are young right now. You're ever you're forever going to remember these, and they're always going to remember these moments too. So. You are absolutely right. So as much as it, it was a tough pill to swallow, like I said, but I, you know, it had to be done. Yeah. It had to be done. So yeah, yep. yeah, it was a blessing, definitely a blessing in disguise. Like I know I'm gonna look back on this one day and just be like, wow, we really made it through that. But yeah, we really made it through that. <laughs> like, straight yeah. up. It's all temporary, fam. Yep. It's definitely all temporary. So what's in store for the near future? Like you got any collaborations on the mix releases or any more fashion endeavors bubbling? <laughs> we still uh pushing the t-shirts. Um, we gonna chill on the hoodies right now. It's, it's finally starting to get hot. So we know we're just gonna go back to pushing heavy on the t-shirts. But um, as far as uh, musically, I'm definitely gonna be uh, DJing a lot more online. I'm definitely feeling, I hadn't touched my turntable since early last year when this pandemic first hit. That's how bad I've been feeling. So I just started like getting back on my turntables like the past few weeks. Right. Yeah, matter of fact, they're right here. They're in my bedroom now. <laughs> I moved them from the basement. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're right here, they're never that far. But yeah, I'm starting to feel like myself again. I wasn't liking none of the music out. I wasn't liking nothing. Like now I took a lot of time to kind of figure out what direction I want to go in in order to DJ forever. Because like I turned 40 last year yeah. and I don't want to be the 40 year old DJ having to play all the current stuff. I know what you're saying. You know, like yeah. you don't want to be that guy competing with for gigs with the 19 year old DJ. You know, that's that's for them. Then you ain't supposed to be co competing with them right. there. Are, but that's another blessing in being up here. I'm able to spin a wider variety of music yeah. and get paid. Yeah. You know, that's not the case in every city. You know, most of the clubs, they just want you to play wherever the newest, hottest stuff is that's out. What I noticed here is there's more um, gigs for people that's you'll see people that's it's dirty and up in there yeah it's like it's up like, in there yeah like and they saying, jamming and they don't want to hear all that yeah like i'm saying the happy hour crowd because you got different ranges of happy hour crowd they go from yep. you, know, you can find the early professionals from the what is it 20s it's to right. like the early 30s then later on the 35s to the 40-ish come out and hang out and they really chill like and you have that niche market you know yeah. like i say i you know love jackson love us out but like you you're definitely right on point because it's yeah. it's kind of narrow you can only deviate so far yep you know? the south built me i will never disrespect the south as far as djing oh, exactly. like uh man i made so much money spending little john and king gang <laughs> twins and being right there for when cash money took over and all of that mm -hmm. like that's irreplaceable mm. i could never disrespect the south mm -hmm. but up here i could spend all oh just a wider mix you know, for a wider crowd base, you know, as far as age is concerned. And then go back and spin all them crunk classics and they're going to love that too. 
Of course. Of you course. know, up here. So I really appreciate, you know, the move that we made because we kind of, my wife got a job up here and I dropped everything. Mm. Okay. You know, like I got two turntables in the mic. I'm going to find some money. That's why I tell like, I, I'm going to be all right. Like you do want to get a great job up here and let's go. Let's drop. I, let, I dropped everything. Like, let's go. Definitely. So Definitely. I had done everything that I could do in Jackson. Okay. Yeah, man. That's dope, man. That's dope. Jackson raised you. Got you paid out here. So that's, that's uh, the God honest truth, straight up and down. Yeah, man. I can't that's wait to go back for homecoming. It's gonna be crazy. I'm trying to get down there at least one more time because I haven't been back since I walked across the stage. You got to go back. It's, <laughs> it's a lot different now. I, a, I already know. Everybody shoot me pictures, and I don't even know what I'm looking at half the time. I'm like, yeah, what you is have it? to go back. Jackson State. It was already dope when we was there, but it's gorgeous now. Mm. Mm. Like you see everything that's going on. Then the city, you're going to go ride around the city and the city looks so much better now. Mm. Like Jackson is on a huge upswing. Like they are doing it. Okay. They are doing it. Yeah, I'm definitely. I got to convince the wife, hey, watch the kid. I'll be back. <laughs> 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 we'll see how well that goes over. You know it. Y'all, you, you already know. That's not fly. Yeah. This is up, church. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yo, but yo, man, I'm not going to hold you up. I want to say thank you for your time. You know, it's a pleasure kicking it with you. You definitely gonna come. I'm, I'm gonna need you on another segment. We got to go even deeper. You were talking about the cash money explosion, how we were just around to just to watch that bubble and take over yeah. the market. So we're gonna have to get more into that one of these times. So, oh, absolutely, man. You know, anything you need, man. Like, you know, this is what it's all about. Like, you didn't ask me for no discount, no hoodie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I asked for no discount on no on your on your book. We have to learn as black people to just swap money with each other yes, yeah. you know what i'm saying no no discount no nothing and if you need some help i got you if i need some help you got me you know like that's just what it is we've known each other for a super long time you know so <laughs> just you us being in this same area man anything you need man you know this is what it is man no there's something not, easy man. as this that's done this is a plus of a pandemic to be able to you know technology to yeah. do stuff yeah. like this you know, so yeah, so easy to connect, so easy to connect and build. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So, how can the people get in touch with you before we get out of here? Uh, man, I'm all over social media, but the main ones I'm on all the time is Instagram and Twitter. So, my Instagram, they're both the same. So, Instagram and Twitter is at DJ MR Adams, at DJ Mr. Adams, and just hit me up on either one of those. I'm, I'm not hard to find at all. I'm always on IG and Twitter, just in the foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the man yes sir and as always this is william j and you know where to find me talking in the attic go on.